Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. We start uh, in chapter 15. This is 5090, syllabus 2023. Now let's look at the syllabus of uh, coordination and response in plants. This is chapter 15. Uh, first one is describe gravitropism as a response in which parts of a plant grow towards or away from gravity. Then the second is describe phototropism as a response in which plants grow towards or away from life. So it's both we're going to study towards or away from gravity, towards or away from light. And then explain the role of oxen. Now what is oxen? Oxen is a plant growth regulator substance. In animals, we call them hormones. In plants, we call them growth substances or growth regulator substances. So like you studied hormones, insulin and glucagon, in animals, now we're going to study plant growth substance. We're not going to call them hormones. We're going to call them oxen. We're going to call them growth substances. So one of them, one of them is oxen, which we are going to study. So explain the role of oxen in controlling shoot growth. Limited to what? Number one, oxen is made in the shoot tip. Number two, oxen spreads through the plant from the shoot tip. So this is the tip. This is where they are made. And then they're going to diffuse downwards. So oxen spreads through the plant from the shoot tip. Oxen is unequally distributed in response to light and gravity. And oxen stimulates cell elongation. Investigate gravit gravitropism and phototropism. So if it's an investigate, that means we need to know some practicals on these, on uh, shoots and roots. Now, as you look at the word gravitropism, gravitropism means gravity. So if it grows towards or if it goes away. So if it will be goes towards this, so plant shoots display negative gravitropism and plant roots display positive gravitropism. So the roots, as you know, go towards gravity. They will grow into the soil while the shoots grow away from gravity. Now this is called positive or negative gravitropism. If it's towards it, towards that stimulus, whatever the stimulus, the stimulus is gravity. So if it's going to move towards it, then it's called positive. If it's going away, then it's called negative gravitropism. So seedling shoots grow upwards and roots grow downwards, no matter how the seed lands. So if the seed lands like this, or the seed lands like this, the radical will always grow downwards. Here also the radical will always grow downwards and the shoot will grow upwards. So whether the seed lands in a like this or like this or in any position, the roots will always grow towards gravity and the shoots will always grow against gravity or negative geotropism or negative gravitropism. Then let's look at phototropism. Phototropism is very simple. You call it a photo. Photo means light. So if the light is coming from the top, then of course the plants are going straight towards light. Uniform distribution of oxygen makes the cells grow evenly. But if you've covered this in a dark box, and then you only have light coming from this side. So then what are you going to find? You see that the plant, you see, it's the plant was going to bend. It's going to, the further growth is going to be towards light. So the plant is going to bend towards light and that's called positive phototropism. And oxen moves to the darker side. So the oxen is going to be on this side. Not on the, the light is coming from this side. It's the other side. Because why? Because there will be more cell elongation and the cells will elongate more on this side. That is why we say that the plant will bend towards light. While the roots are going to grow away from light. So that is called negative phototropism. So we've got to talk of positive phototropism and negative phototropism. Negative means away from the stimulus, which is in this uh, situation light. So towards light, positive phototropism shoots are positively phototropic roots will grow away from light so they are negative they are showing negative phototropism now the first thing that we need to understand is that the oxen is produced at the shoot tip the oxen is produced at the shoot tip and the root tip and then it diffuses downwards or laterally wherever it is present and this results in repeated cell division. So there's repeated mitosis, repeated mitotis, mitotic cell division, but no cell enlargement. And then the oxen is transported down the stem. 
and the auxin keeps cell wall plastic allowing extension and this is the region of cell elongation or cell extension so repeated mitosis then vacuole form in the cell cytoplasm enlargement begins and then you see the vacuole join up to form central vacuole which absorbs water and expands cells lengthwise by increase increase in turgor so first there were smaller vacuoles now there are larger vacuoles more water enters and the cells elongate of course you study this in great detail in the a levels so this results in cell elongation so this is how auxin which is produced in the apical apex apical meristems the name is apical meristems you don't have to know this name but i want you to just know that there is a name to this where the auxins are produced and then the auxins diffuse downwards and this auxin results in number 1 repeated cell division more mitosis and then cell elongation now another thing which you've got to remember is that auxin where in shoots only results in cell elongation but where is the cell elongation going to take place that's the most important thing you see if this is the what we are looking at this is the stem the shoot and light is coming from this side right now which side now this is the side towards light not this side but this side the side away from light the cells are going to elongate more now if you look at this diagram these are the cells which are on this side right this side the side towards light and this is the side which is away from light now you see the cells have elongated more there is more cell elongation on the side away from light which you can say is also the shaded side of the shoot so the cells are elongated more on that side now they've shown you this diagram they've shown you this arrow showing you that this is the part that they have magnified so the lit side of the shoot and the shaded side of the of the shoot so more auxins auxins are found more towards the shaded part of the shoot and that is where it causes cell elongation so please remember auxin causes cell elongation on the shaded side of the shoot the chemical name for auxin is iaa indole acetic acid so we might uh, give it that to you in the question So when sunlight is overhead the IA molecules produced by the apical meristem are distributed evenly in the shoot but once the sunlight shines on the shoot at an angle the IAA molecules move to the far side and induce the elongation of cells on that side cell elongation results in the bending of the shoot towards light another diagram explaining this meristem is makes IAA IAA diffuses down the shady side cells elongate now you see this is what you have to understand this was the the further growth is like this the further growth is like this it can't be that this is going to bend this is not going to bend but the further growth and that's why i've drawn a line here this is where it was all of them and then now the further growth is towards light another diagram showing you this auxin moves downwards auxin moves towards side auxin moves towards the darker side will provide more growth and cause bending of the plant now in order to investigate the effects of uh, light and gravity on shoots and roots that's one of the important syllabus point to investigate we have to use uh, an apparatus called clinostat and what is a clinostat it is used for control experiments it contains a cork disc which can be set to rotate in a vertical or horizontal plane by a motor cancel out the effect of unilateral stimulus to make factors uniform or evenly distributed now the growth response of shoots to light what do we do we use a clinostat it counts cancels out the effects of unilateral light and gravity by rotating the disc it is set up as a control for investigation of growth responses of roots and shoots to unilateral light and gravity now let's study gravitropism in p radicals radical is the root you must remember that i'm sure you do remember that radicals are the root 
Soak about 20 peas in water for a day and then let them germinate in a vertical roll of moist blotting paper. After three days, choose 12 seedlings with straight radicals and pin six of these to the turntable of a clinostat so that the radicals are horizontal. Put another six seedlings to a cork that will fit in a wide mouth jar. Leave the jar on its side. A clinostat is a clockwork or electric turntable which rotates the seeding slowly about four times an hour. Four times an hour. Although gravity is pulling sideways on the roots, it will pull equally on all sides as they rotate. Place the jar and the clinostat in the same condition of lighting or leave them in darkness for two days. Now you can see what has happened. The seedling in X has curved downwards. While the seedling in Y in a complete darkness did not, anything did not happen because it was constantly being rotated. Why? Since every side of the radical of the seedling in clinostat Y is acted on by gravity. The radical will grow straight horizontally. While the one which was placed without being rotated, it has grown downwards. So the seedling in X is here and the seedling in Y has grown straight. Now this is again showing you the experiment on the shoots. So two clinostats with potted plant horizontal position. Rotate one other stationary observation. Stationary clinostat, the shoot bends upward, negative geotropism or negative gravitropism, and root bends downwards, positive gravitropism. Rotating clinostat, no bending of shoot or root. Why? Because the gravitational stimulus is not unilateral when rotated. Another experiment that we need to do is phototropism in shoots. Select two potted seedlings, sunflower or runner bean of similar size and water them both. Place one of them under a cardboard box with a window cut on one side so that light reaches the shoot from one direction. As you can see here in this experiment. Place the other plant in an identical situation but on a cleaner stat this will rotate the plant about four times per hour and expose each side of the shoot equally to the source of light. This is the controlled result. After one or two days the two plants are removed from the boxes and compared Remember it is after one or two days, not in hours. It will be found that the stem of the plant with one side illumination has changed its direction of growth and is growing towards the light. The controlled shoot has continued to grow vertically. And now what does this suggest? That the shoot has responded to one sided lighting by growing towards light. The shoot is said to be positively phototropic because it grows towards the direction of the stimulus. However, the results of an experiment with a single plant cannot be used to draw conclusions that apply to green plants as a whole. The experiment described here is more of an illustration than a critical investigation. To investigate phototropism through a large number of plants from a wide variety of species would have to be used. Now, what are the advantages? The advantages are the shoot brings its leaves into the best situation for photosynthesis. Similarly, the flowers are brought into an exposed position where they are more likely to be seen and pollinated by flying insects. Now, negative geotropism in shoot shoots that are negatively geotropic grow vertically. This lifts the leaves and flowers above the ground, helps the plant to compete for light and carbon dioxide. The flowers are brought into an advantageous position for insect or wind pollination. And seed dispersal is more effective from fruits, fruits on a long vertical stem. However, these advantages are product of a tall shoot because the taller the shoot it is, the more it is exposed and the more it will be have be help in pollination and of course re receiving more light and that is why plants compete for light and if you place a sort of a brick on a lawn uh, and you remove the brick after a few days the shoots have grown taller because they hope that as they grow taller they might experience some light source the thing that we need to understand is the response in geotropism in in the roots, important is that you have to know the difference in the root and the shoot or the stem. In the root, the auxin inhibits cell growth. So in the roots, it is always going to be found lower layer is shorter. This lower layer is shorter and the upper layer is longer. So auxins inhibit cell growth. They inhibit cell growth, so that is why you're seeing we say inhibit cell growth. So this curving down. So this this year auxins are found more, so they're going to inhibit cell growth, while they are going to the other part is going to grow more. 
So in roots, auxin inhibits cell growth and the lower cell layer is shorter. This lower cell layer is shorter. So it turns down away from light. While let's look at it, what happens in the stem. In the stem, it's something else. Auxin stimulates cell growth. So lower layer is longer. So auxin stimulates cell growth in stems. So that is why the lower layer is longer here. and turns up towards light. So this is how we're going to talk about geotropism, is gravy tropism, in which the auxin in the root inhibits cell growth and auxin stimulates cell growth in the stem. So the lower layer is longer and turns up towards light. Again, another description of the same, just repeating myself, young seedlings placed horizontally, roots grow downwards and stem upwards. Auxins accumulate on the lower side of the root. Higher auxin concentration on the lower side inhibits cell division and elongation. Cells on the upper side of the root grow faster, lower auxin concentration. Roots curve downwards, positively geotrosome. Stem curves upwards, negatively geotropic. Now you can see this phototropism experiment in which the control of the light is opening in the box and then the stem is not bonding towards light and is the clinostel is wound up. But in the experiment, the opening in the box, young plant stem growing towards light box. So in one, we have the clinostat, which is the control. So please remember C for clinostat, C for control. So this is the control and in which we have a clinostat which rotates four times in an hour. And so both all the sides of the plant are getting uh, the light uniformly. This is another experiment which keeps on coming up and may come in one of your MCQs. So I want you to know about it is that we remove the tip and then we place the tip on an agar block and we let the hormone, or we don't say hormone, but the growth substance to diffuse. And then we place the block on one side and you see how it results in cells on the shaded side elongate in response to the hormone, the red dots. So there's going to be more cell elongation on that side on which you have placed the auxin, uh, which is the, because the auxin has diffused from the tip onto the agar block and then you place the agar block. Uh, thank you very much for uh, subscribing and for watching and please remember this is chapter 15 which has been completed and this is a new chapter in the 2023 syllabus so we do not have any questions or MCQs on this so this is going to be examined this is going to be new for all the students taking their exam in 2023. Thank you very much.